Hey guys, I got this camper shell here. It's one that's designed to go on the back of a pickup truck. What I'm planning to do is build walls for it, make it where I can put it on a four wheeler trailer. So I'm gonna make a little video kind of showing some of the steps. It's not gonna be an exact step-by-step -step video, but I'm just gonna show you some of the things I'm doing. I did bring out the bathroom scales. So I'm gonna try to keep a approximate weight of the walls and everything. Get an idea of how much weight I'm putting on that trailer. Here's a look at the trailer I'm gonna be using. It's a five foot by eight foot trailer. I'm gonna use of course, I got some lumber stacked up there, but um, what I'm going to use for the walls, I believe those are called LP Smart Panels. Buy those at Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm going to build the walls where I can put it on the trailer or take it off the trailer. Um, that trailer is just a little bit narrow, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put, I guess, kind of lips on the side of my box. That way that shell will fit on top of it. I just finished one of the sidewalls. Show you what I used to put that together. This is what it looks like on the ground. This is the inside. So this is gonna be the inside of the camper. I've got that board along the bottom is a treated two by four. Then I got treated two by fours in the corners. I did that, that way if I have a little bit of water leakage in the corners, it'll be treated, so hopefully it'll last longer. In the middle, I've got a couple of non-treated two by twos. And I just went with the two by twos, that way it'd give it a little bit more structural support, but it'd be lighter. Of course, the non-treated is gonna be lighter and the two by two is gonna be treater or lighter than the two by four. I'm going to pick up that wall. Then I'm going to weigh it right here on the bathroom scale. Of course, I'm going to have two of those side walls, so I will multiply that weight by two. That wall was 48.4 pounds, and I'm going to have two of them, so that's going to add 96.8 pounds. This trailer is rated for 1,450 pounds. Well, I'm running out of daylight here, but I just put these three rails on and I came up with approximately 13 pounds added weight. Now that brace right there and that brace right there, I'm gonna take off. I just have that there to hold my rails up where I could get them screwed into place. Well, I have ran out of daylight. I do have the front panel put on. I gotta put some more screws in it, but that front panel, I believe it weighed, I got it written down, I believe it weighed 18 pounds. And I don't know if I said it earlier, but those panels I cut to 36 inches. So those walls are gonna be about 37 and a half inches tall. So let's go look so far. So far I'm gonna have the shell at 132, two sides totaling 96.8. And the front will be the total of those two. This is the view from inside so far. Now, again, I'm going to take these braces out. I did that to just try to hold the walls in until I can get some screws in. Um, one other thing I'm going to do, I've got these shelf brackets. Um, I'm going to put those in the corners and that'll give it some more stability as far as, I guess, keeping it square and keeping it from working, I guess, side to side. Now I'm not, as of right now, I'm not planning on putting a bottom in it. That trailer's got a wood bottom. Probably if I use it, I may throw a tarp down to keep the dirt and water from coming up, but I just don't want to add any extra weight. So I'm not going to put a bottom in there. So hopefully these brackets right here will help keep everything square when you're loading it and unloading it on the trailer. Well, I'm back out here working on the camper again today. See what this looks like in the daylight, what I've got so far. And right here, my weight so far is approximately 260 pounds. So I've got my baseboard 
added it along the back. Now I'm gonna start putting these shelf brackets in the corners. I weighed those shelf brackets. Four of them weigh approximately a pound. So I'm gonna put those in there and hopefully that'll tend to keep everything squared up. So I got the back panel and door on. All that together weighs approximately 60 pounds. A couple of hinges there. Little hasps so you can put a lock on it. I'll probably do something else for an extra latch just to make that more secure because that's kind of kind of wobbly, I think. I mean, it's pretty strong, but I'd hate for those little screws to get stripped out. So I may put another latch on there. Then I'll have that hasp to lock it. I left that board going across the bottom. That way there's support all the way across. Then so far on the insides, I got a couple of shelf brackets in the corners. And that's what it looks like so far anyways. So next I've got some, got some little braces to kind of to put around the bottom just to hold the, I guess the studs or whatever you want to call them in place. Then I've got to put rails around the top. That way the camper will sit on top of the rails. This box isn't as wide as the camper shell, but I'm gonna put rails out on each side. That way it'll fit on top of there. I've got, I've got these br uh, braces or brackets I'm putting on those. Those are just the, come from the end of the two by six. Then I am using lag, these lag bolts to help hold that in. And then I'm gonna put screws in to the side, hopefully to keep that rail from coming up. And then where those little studs are, I'm gonna put shelf brackets I got from Walmart. Shelf brackets right here will go up under there and give those um, side rails more support. I think I'm gonna go ahead and course this is the two by six rail i sure don't want it to come off because that's what the camper shell is going to be tied to i'm going to sink this lag bolt in there that way that two by six will have a pretty good piece of metal holding it on and again that's what the rails look like so i just also added this little dead bolt right here that makes the door more solid. On the inside of the door, I added a little handle. I'm gonna get some of those little hook and ring latches. That way you can latch it from the inside. And I guess I'm gonna paint it. And I think I will be about done. Well, I have finished painting it. I think that I am done with the construction of it. Next thing I got to do is get it loaded on this trailer. Now I have built another little, I don't know if you'd want to call that a dolly or a trailer to put it on. The plan is to pick the thing up, put blocks or wood under it, and then roll this thing under it. Then I can use that to move it on and off the trailer, move it around with. casters are supposed to be rated well i think those were rated for more i had to put new tires on them and the tires the little wheels were rated for 300 pounds and this one is rated for 300 pounds that thing it's not real easy to get up there I imagine with the top on there it's going to be way harder but i did manage to get it up there now i got to get my little dolly out from underneath it i got that thing loaded on there it was a pretty tight squeeze i think the sides the plywood's bowed out a little bit you can see i got a little bit of space there 
a little bit of space there, but in the middle it's kind of bowed. So, anyways, it's a pretty tight squeeze. I did measure that one. Hopefully, it's squared up on there pretty good. And I got these little pockets right there where I can run a strap and strap that thing down to the trailer. But again, that thing was heavy. A little bit hard to load without the shell on it. Got the camper just, or the camper shell just sitting on there. I don't have it bolted down. I do have a little bit of a problem, but maybe I can solve it a little bit. My my box is not exactly square. I thought I was getting that square, but it's not. This end right here, you can see is flush. This end is not. Hopefully that's close enough that I can make that work. I do have some weather stripping that I'm gonna put in that gap right there. Now in the front, there's a big gap. So what I'm thinking about doing is getting um, some flashing and going up under there and curling it under and then coming down here. That way when the water hits, it's gonna hit that flashing and hopefully roll down. I don't, to put flashing in there, I don't see how any water could get in that gap right there. But I did have to slide it a little bit forward just because the way this door comes down and maybe maybe if i took this trim off maybe i should right here close to the top but the way this door comes down it, it kind of hangs out further you can see right there a little bit of overhang for this top window or top door to come down but anyways i think i can make it work it doesn't look just wonderful because it's not exactly square but i think i can make it work and this is what it looks like on the inside. Pretty good echo going on, but anyways, I am gonna run bolts through holes and probably drill a bunch more holes and try to bolt it down real good. And then like I say, what I plan to do here is attach some aluminum flashing, or metal flashing there, run it through that gap and then run it down. Again, that'll keep water from that hole right there but anyways i wish i would have got it a little more square but i think it's gonna work um i don't know if i told you the the final weight no i didn't weigh all the um like the eye bolts and hinges and everything necessarily so it may be a few pounds higher but i've got it at about 352 pounds um if you wanted to round up 360 pounds total so that is plenty light enough for this trailer. Again, kind of what it, I had that door open earlier, but got that hook right here to keep that door from opening. And I guess someone, if, if you were sleeping here, could open in this, but you probably tie a piece of string from there to there. And that would keep that, if you wanted extra security, if you were sleeping, but Someone's trying to get in, get in, I'll probably wake up. I've added weather stripping between the box and the camper shell. Got it bolted down. Now I'm gonna put flashing and cover up that gap right there. So hopefully I'll be able to run that flashing in that slot and be able to fold it up and uh, around and put screws in it to hold it in place so now I've got that flashing on just put um, roofing screws to hold it in place and I've got it going in and then it's folded up so the water won't be able to get in go in there and show you what it looks like from the inside now right here on the edges I'm probably gonna have to either put some caulking or where they're stripping in that little gap right there. That's what it looks like inside here. Again, I got this screwed into place and that water's gonna have to go uphill to get in. But again, I think I'm gonna try to smash some weather stripping in that little gap right there. It doesn't, I don't know that it necessarily needs to be there, but I'll provide a little bit more insulation at least. At least I'll put it on the sides there. All right, so I have got weather stripping down in the corners. 
I'm just using this chisel to just try to pack it in there pretty tight. Keep the water and the dust out. And I think from the outside, I'm gonna take these screws out. I'm gonna pull that flashing up. Put a little roll of weather stripping there. Try to keep the water out. I did push some weather stripping in that gap, so hopefully water won't get in there, but I'll probably put a little silicone or caulking in there too. So I think I am done with the construction. This little girl right here wants to show the inside of the camper. You gonna show them? Yeah. All right. What do you think about it, girl? I'm probably gonna put a canvas drop cloth in the bottom for the floor. I could staple it to the wood. I don't know if I'll do that. <laughs> One other cool thing is that I believe that window right there is big enough for a window unit air conditioner. So that's pretty cool. I may put some some chicken house curtain on that wall on the inside provide a little more insulation but yeah i think i'm done with this thing it's funny thanks for watching thanks for watching here's our little kitty cat meow meow meow